Bing's new AI chatbot is a huge improvement over ChatGPT if you know how to use it properly to get the most out of it. If you don't know what you're doing, Bing is prone to ending your chat sessions prematurely or deleting her answers if you say something mean. In this video, I'm sharing why Bing is so much better than ChatGPT and how you can craft the best prompts to make use of its biggest strength. Let's pop over to Bing and see what we can accomplish with its new superpower. So here's how to get the most out of Bing chat. And first up, you wanna choose the right conversation style. So you'll see here we have more creative, more balanced, or more precise. And in general, we wanna go with more creative for most things. The exception being if you're doing anything with math or calculating something, then in that case, you might wanna go with more balanced to get more accurate results. Precise isn't very interesting. You end up getting robotic, generic results. So for the most part, we're gonna be using more creative mode. Keep in mind that at this point, each chat session is limited to 10 prompts before Bing forgets what was said earlier in the conversation, you're gonna have to restart. Second is that Bing's biggest strength is that it's connected to the internet in addition to the prompt outputs you can get it to generate. So we want to make use of this whenever possible. So without instructing Bing to conduct a search in our prompt, we're gonna get similar answers and outputs as we would get with ChatGPT. Remember, ChatGPT is not connected to the internet, so basically, you should always ask Bing to perform a search in your prompt because otherwise you might as well just use ChatGPT. So let's just top pop in an example, look up how to grow roses, give me instructions for planting a rose garden. And you can tell that Bing has performed a search when you get this little check mark and searching for your search term. And you'll also notice in its outputs that Bing gives you the reference links to what it looked up. So you can always go and click those to double check that whatever it says is true and isn't just made up. So the prompt structure you want to use to make sure that Bing does do a search is something like this. So look up or research X, then use that to Y. So look at this prompt. So write a paragraph about starting a garden in your backyard. And you can see we don't have Bing performing any searches and it simply writes me a paragraph. To get a better output, let's try look up the writing style of Epic Gardening. This is a really popular gardening blog and creator. Then use what you learn to improve the paragraph. So the first paragraph we got is pretty generic. It's pretty boring. And for this one, you can see that it did a search. And then based on what I learned from the search results, Epic Gardening is a website that provides simple, practical, creative gardening tips for aspiring gardeners. The writing style is friendly, informative, engaging. And then if we look at what it outputs, it's much more approachable. It's much more written for a social media audience and we get a better, more interesting result from asking Bing to perform that search before it writes something for us. Just a couple of limitations to keep in mind when you're using Bing is that for facts and numbers, especially you want to double check the sources that Bing provides just to make sure that it is accurate because just like ChatGPT, Bing can lie and hallucinate made up answers. So it's always a good idea to double check these things. Both of these AI models are very competent when stating lies. So it can be very easy to trick you into believing that it is obviously true, but it's always best to double check. Bing also has stricter guardrails than ChatGPT, and this can make it act in unpredictable ways. So sometimes it shuts down conversations if it doesn't like where it's going. If it thinks something is unethical or something it sounds mean, it will shut that down. Um, and it's also prone to deleting answers midway through generating them. I've had it writing me a big long story and then it goes and just deletes that and tells me to ask something else instead. If this happens to you, there's a couple things you can do. First, try rephrasing your prompt. And if that doesn't work, start with a new fresh chat session and that might solve the issue. But even though Bing can be very temperamental and unpredictable, it can be super helpful too. And as we can see here at the bottom of this example, Bing is useful in that it provides suggestions for what you can ask next to continue on the conversation or expand on the topic that you've already been talking to it about. This can be really helpful because none of us are used to chatting with an AI bot. So it can be very easy to get stuck and not know what you should do to continue the conversation. So this can get the gears turning in your head and help you get unstuck and figure out where to go next when you are using this tool. Yeah. So that's much better. Okay. That doesn't really help. What are the four easy steps? Let's see what that does. So maybe I want to know what four easy steps are for starting my garden. And this will let me expand on that. So what is Bing good at and what can you use it for? And you can use Bing for most things that you would use chat GPT for, except you can get better answers because it is connected to the internet. So this means Bing can do some extended things that chat GPT is not very good at. So for example, one thing that Bing is really good at is gathering and analyzing data. This can be really useful if you're doing research projects, 
for work, for school, or even just personal projects. So basically you can get Bing to perform a search, gather data and collect that into a chart and then analyze that data and come up with conclusions. Let me show you an example to illustrate what I mean. So for example, let's continue on with our garden example. And maybe I've never grown a garden before and I want to say, find the five easiest vegetables I could grow in my backyard garden. So I can ask Bing to find that out for me and put it in a chart. So let's start with this prompt. Look up the easiest vegetables to grow in a backyard garden. Create a chart comparing the top 10 options with columns for vegetable, when to plant, time to harvest, and the light requirements. ChatGPT is going to perform a search and then it's going to generate a chart based on what I asked. So here we have the columns for vegetables, when to plant it, time to harvest, and the light requirements. So now I have this really handy chart to help me decide what I want to plant in my garden and when to plant them and the care instructions for growing these things. I can take this even a step further and ask it to analyze what it found and tell me what the best things are to plant. So write a report on what you found and explain the three easiest vegetables I can plant in my garden. So let's see what Bing comes up with. So you can see it is generating me a report, it gives me a list of the easiest ones to grow and okay, it's not giving me the three easiest. So let me continue that prompt and see if we can get it to give me the three easiest. Okay, and there we go. We have our answer. The three easiest vegetables to grow out of these options are radishes, lettuces, and green beans. And it tells me why they're easy to grow and further information on planting these. So Bing can be really useful in pulling together data and information from across the internet putting that into a chart for you. And then you can ask it to analyze that data and answer questions for you. Super, super useful. The second way you can use Bing is to teach it new skills. Now you can get Bing to look up any skill, learn from that, and then apply that to the answer it gives you. So for example, we can teach Bing by getting it to look up how to craft mid journey prompts and then get it to output prompts for us that we can plug into mid journey to generate images. So the prompt I would use for this is look up how to create image prompts using mid journey. Use what you learn to write a prompt that generates the description of whatever image you want. All right, so let's do look up how to create good image prompts using mid journey. Use what you learned to write a prompt that generates a unicorn running through a field in the style of Van Gogh. So it's going to do a search on how to create good image prompts using mid journey. It's going to tell me what it learned and then hopefully it's going to give me a prompt. Okay. So it has generated the prompt. Let me grab that, pop it into mid journey and I'll show you what came out. So I've popped Bing's mid journey prompt into mid journey and this is what it spit out. You can also use Bing to help you improve your writing. Now, before we get into that, I just want to point out that we are at eight of 10 prompts before Bing forgets. So let's start fresh with a new topic and start a new chat. You can do that by clicking the little broom button here. It'll bring us back to a fresh chat session. So to get Bing to help you improve your writing, we can do that in a couple of ways. So first you can ask it for a critique and advice on the writing that you have produced. So for example, here's my essay on topic. Look up the editing process used by book publishers. Pretend that you are a literary editor and critique my work and give me advice on how to improve my writing. So I can put in that prompt, put in my sample of writing and ask Bing to critique it. And it's going to look that up and then give me advice on how to improve my writing. So that is one way to use Bing to improve your writing. The second way is to co-edit with the AI. And what a lot of people do when it comes to this is they will do one mega prompt with what they want Bing to do. And if that doesn't output what they want, they'll tweak that prompt and then run it again. And this isn't the optimal way to use Bing for writing. And it is much better to go back and forth with Bing in a co-editing process to get better results. This way you can be more specific in the things that you want to tweak versus writing out the entire prompt and getting Bing to regenerate the entire piece of writing. So let me show you what I mean. So here's the first way I could approach this. So look up the history of Bitcoin, then write me a short essay about why Bitcoin is important. And it's going to perform the search. It's going to write me an essay, but maybe I don't like how that came out. Maybe it was too boring or it was just not very exciting. So instead I could tweak my prompt and run it again. Maybe I want it to include specific things so I could retweak my prompt and ask it for to include specific things. So, okay. So then I do this prompt instead, write me a short essay about Bitcoin, include the hash wars, threat of regulation and explain sound money. So it's going to search all those things and then rewrite that again, but making sure it includes the topics that I told it to. Now I could just keep doing this until I'm happy with it, but it's going to generate a brand new essay each time. And maybe there's parts of the essay that I actually like, and I don't want it to change. So instead I could co-write 
this essay along with Bing instead. So here's how I would approach that. So instead I would start as I did in the beginning. So look up the history of Bitcoin, then write me a short essay about why Bitcoin is important. So for example, maybe I see there's a mistake in paragraph two that I want it to correct. And maybe the examples in paragraph three are not very exciting and I want them to change them to something specific. So instead of writing this and getting a new essay, I would instead I would put in the point about X in paragraph two is wrong. It's actually this instead then rewrite paragraph two with this new information. I run that prompt and get Bing to correct that. Next, okay, maybe paragraph four is too vague. Include three examples about X, Y, and Z. So I run that and then get Bing to change paragraph three. So going through this process step-by-step, step, I can tweak what I have and shape it into an essay that actually works for me. And this lets you get much more specific. It lets you learn and use the AI to improve your writing versus just getting it to regenerate the same thing in different ways. So this can be really useful for improving your writing and producing something that doesn't have that robotic generic kind of voice that you generally get from AI models without putting in this kind of effort. The next thing you can do is get Bing to complete specific tasks for you. So for example, you can get it to write an email response to somebody that wants to meet for coffee and say you want to turn them down in a polite way. You can get Bing to do that. You can also get Bing to take on different roles before it generates a response. So for example, pretend you are a lawyer, write an email to my client, Bob, who has not paid off his bill for services rendered. So here's a possible email you can use. So payment reminder invoice number one, two, three, four, due on the date, dear Bob, I hope this email finds you well, blah, blah, blah. And it generates a pretty serviceable invoice reminder email that I could tweak and send this to a client. Writing emails for things like this for business purposes or whatever is I don't know, really annoying. I hate doing it and I'm not good at knowing what I'm supposed to say. And Bing can help take some of those tasks off your shoulders. You know, this took me five seconds to write this into Bing and I have a place to start that I might want to tweak and send. And so instead of me spending, you know, 10, 15 minutes figuring out how to do this myself, I can simply ask Bing to help me out. So another example, maybe I want to write a cover letter for a job I'm applying to. So write me a professional looking cover letter for a job as a 3D animator at Pixar. Here's a list of my skills, education, and past jobs. So I've listed some examples of skills I might have, where I went to school, and where I previously worked. So let's see what Bing comes up with. And it does a pretty damn good job. Obviously you might have to tweak some of this if it is making things up. So it's saying that I am proficient in skills using software such as Maya, Blender, ZBrush, Photoshop. Maybe I don't have skills in all of those. You wanna double check these things and make sure there's no lies in there, but this is a great place to start in, you know, a couple of seconds I have most of this done and I just make a few tweaks and I could go and send that out. So this is really super useful. You can get Bing to take over a lot of these annoying administrative type tasks and writing assignments for things like emails and communications, definitely a huge improvement in your day-to-day -day life. But those are some of the biggest uses I've found so far for Bing. Let me know in a comment below what you've been using Bing for. I know there's probably a lot of different use cases and we've barely begun to scratch the surface of what is possible with new AI tools like Bing. Keeping these prompting tips in mind is gonna help you get better results than 98% of people using Bing. So I've put together a little cheat sheet with all of the best tips and tricks for using AI models like ChatGPT and Bing with prompt templates and examples. It's super useful. You can pull this up as a reference whenever you're using Bing or ChatGPT, and you can grab that for free at the link in the description below. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share it with a friend. Otherwise, if you're ready to learn more about how you can thrive through the digital revolution, then check out one of these videos next. And I will see you guys next time.